Hi everyone, and welcome to this week's installment for CMC Markets. My name is Ms. Schneider, Chief Strategist for MarketGauge.com. Going to do a brief video for you today covering a few of the asset classes, commodity related. And of course, this is all ahead of the FOMC, which will be announced at 2 p.m. Eastern Time tomorrow in the U.S. And just to add that to the long list of things that we have influencing the market this week, CPI, PPI, war, gas leakages, and a rally that we should have not been so surprised about because last week when I did the video for y'all, I showed you how if we looked at the small caps in particular, you really needed to see that line in the sand of the 80-month moving average hold up. And so far at that 170 level, if we look at IWM, that has happened. 177 though, big resistance. So keep that in mind for tomorrow because it got right up to it today and started to retreat. So let's begin by talking about the dollar and particularly this $1 pair, which is the dollar versus the yen. So the dollar, if you just look at the cash chart of the dollar right now, it had a spectacular move up as of July and now peaked last week and it's really basically consolidating above 105.50. So keep that in mind, uh, especially if you like trading the currencies, because the dollar at 105.50 and above remains bias bullish. Below, we can start thinking, hmm, maybe somewhat of a trouble. And of course, on the heels of FOMC, with four or so dovish comments by Fed members this week in the US, it is possible that they'll call for a pause, which of course will mean that the dollar might fall and of course gold rally will have a look. But taking a look strictly here at the yen dollar relationship. Remember we had that big day here, that 150 level we haven't cleared, but it hasn't really done very much since the entire last one, two, three, four, five trading days are all within the bar of this day. So not so much in terms of clarity, obviously it would be very clear if we broke the low or broke the high. But in between, a little bit dicer, and that's why I tell you about the dollar at 105.50. So let's put it to you this way. At this point right now, if we take a look at 148.45 above, that would be again like 105.50 in the dollar, 148.55 and above. It's probably more bullish in terms of the dollar yen ratio underneath maybe the yen starts to get a little bit of movement there and you could start to think that the dollar might slip and of course the biggest biggest point that you're going to be looking at right now is this 50-day moving average at 146.80 of course we had that mean reversion but that's already in play and done because what we did is we went to the 50-day moving average in momentum interestingly enough momentum being weaker than the price because you can see that the 50 day is right here where we still have a distance to go from the 50 day moving average in price so that tells me that if this does indeed fall the dollar to the yen and we see this 50 break it would be another bearish diversion which could mean eventually that the dollar will break against the yen okay let's move on now to gold So naturally, with the war, the gold market rallied a bit. That makes sense. But a bit. I actually would have thought that we would have seen much higher levels. However, if you remember last week, we talked about 1865. And so today, our closing level was really pretty much above that. We did not close above it yesterday. And so now we have to say, can we can continue the pattern? So a couple of things of interest, besides the fact that we had held that 1830, we did have, if you look at a GLD chart, not a gold futures chart, you'll see that there's a gap, gap down, then a gap up, leaving somewhat of an island bottom. We're not seeing that, obviously, in the futures right here. So, but we do see a gap higher. So right now, that gives you a very clean line in the sand to be looking at. That low of 1857.5 has to hold. You want that gap to hold. It doesn't hold, I would think that, for whatever reason, maybe higher rates or what have you, 
uh, the gold market is going to go back down. If it does hold, then we've got a couple of other key areas. Look at the body of the candle here and the body of the candle yesterday on the actual close. So 1865, right there, give or take a couple of cents there. Here it says 1864 and change. So between 1864 and 1865, above, I would continue to maintain more of a bullish bias below. Then, of course, I would, like I said, I'd be looking at that gap. You don't want to see it fill down to 1850. Then, if it holds 1865, based on this activity that we're seeing today, we did have a death cross, but that's all the way up here. Your next area of resistance is definitely going to be somewhere up around 1880. And again, then we're going to get back up to 1890. And then, of course, if you see these two highs here, we're at 1896, 1897. So there's going to be resistance along the way unless something so incredibly explosive happens, either dovish conversation by the Fed or an escalation of what's going on, uh, the unfortunate situation that we have right now in the Middle East. Now, what is also interesting here is the momentum. We have not gotten a mean reversion. All we've done is come back from the lows of momentum. And remember, we talked about this. The momentum at this time, which was down here, at that point, gold was much lower. So the momentum is weak and relative to the price, but the price is still overall much stronger than when we saw momentum here. That tells me that if we can get a clearance of this Bollinger Band in momentum, then obviously the next area of momentum we'd want to see clear is this 50-day moving average. But at this point, there's no divergence, bullish or bearish, in terms of the gold chart. And really, I think this is going to be so heavily news driven. So remember those levels. OK, so if we move on to WTI crude oil December contract, if you just step back and see what I see, you can really see this huge basing action here, almost like a giant head and shoulders inverted bottom. And of course, we had that breakout here, as we were talking about, over 80. And on the big break, we basically tested the support. And now, of course, we've hopped right back above the 50-day moving average with an inside day, by the way, today to the trading day yesterday. So this chart is interesting, but I also want to show you because the momentum indicators are very, very important. Looking at this chart alone, what we can say is that We've got, obviously, the 50-day moving average right here at 83.66. So let's call that our pivotal point for tomorrow, above 83.66. More bias on the upside, below more bias on the downside. 80, your ultimate support, of course. And if it does hold 83.66, we had a high the other day. Didn't quite get up to these highs right here. So I would say 85.98 to $86 a barrel would be our next place to have a look. This could actually fluctuate up and down between 80 and 90 for a while until some fresh news comes out, either a deal that is made uh, that OPEC actually decides to increase production or something escalates with Iran, which of course would then cause the prices to scream. So don't get overly bullish or bearish at these levels is what I'm trying to say. I would anticipate $10 range, but for the very short term, like I said, Keep your eye on about that 83.50 level, below negative, above bullish. And of course, then we'll take a look at that 86 and then 80, uh, well, really 86, then 86.25 until we get into the next cluster of real resistance, which is going to be somewhere around 88.40. Moving back into the metals, let's have a look at silver here. The silver chart, interesting, this is the December contract. So with the silver chart right now, you can see there was nice clean bottoms here after this big, big move lower in March. And then again, the big move lower that we had early October. And now, of course, the war has been obviously, just like with gold, somewhat of an incentive in keeping this moving higher. And also, you've got to keep an eye on the interest rates uh, for tomorrow with that meeting. Right now, the bond market is telling you that it may have bottomed, but it could also just kind of go sideways here, in which case then these metals can start to act independently more on other types of bullish incentives, like, for example, uh, inflation increasing because of the geopolitics. So for right now, what we're looking at right here is we can f kind of forget about this bottom. We do not want to see that come back. We do not want to see this breakdown under 2160. 
however if we move up to recent action look at today's action was an inside day to the action the day before that makes it pretty simple when you have an inside day you want to look at the high of the day so the high today was 2218 above 2218 that tells me that we're probably going to move up a little bit higher again and of course what would be our next real level of resistance we've had a lot of stuff happening between 23 and 2250 so i would say we'd have to look at 2250 first over that 2218 and then we can start thinking about 23 before we run into major resistance here at that 50-day moving average at 2333. So that's kind of the upside targets obviously between 2160 then I would be looking at 2120 and of course if we break down under these recent lows of 2080 that's not so positive. And lastly, of course, natural gas. So I have to say, I feel really good about the fact that I may have been one of the first voices that got to talk to you about the base in natural gas and the fact that it looked like natural gas was ready to take a rally. We also had mentioned that at this point now, it could take a rapid trip to four, hasn't happened yet. So you can see we've stalled a little bit here and for the last couple of days makes sense with PPI, CPI, and FOMC. The war people don't really know what's going on yet. So with that inside day, again, let's show you that inside day rule. The high today was 3.471, above 3.471, I would think that this will continue its march higher with its next real resistance being somewhere here around 355, this is all short term of course, then 380, and of course, you know, 4, that's our kind of uh, our, our holy grail area that we're looking at and I would actually be probably thinking about taking some profit if you were more on a swing trade. On the flip side, however, with that same inside day, if we take out the low today of $3.32, then I think we have to go back and do a little bit of a reset closer to around that 310 to 311 level um, before we take another look to see if it goes lower than that. Okay, that's it for now. Hope you have a great trading day, great afternoon, and may you be safe. Thanks so much for watching and bye for now.